All right, so we just got a service call. Ice freezer running warm. Um, just walked in, shut the door. Um, the fans didn't turn on. Uh, looked like we could be in defrost. I'm not really sure. Coil looks pretty clear. I don't hear any refrigerant flowing or anything like that. Could be in drip. All right, so here's our rack right here. We got one ball of oil. Oh, uh, just checking out my compressor. That one feels like it's running. That one's running. That one's running. Look at that. What is that? Temperature response valve. All right, so that one is running also. Check our liquid level. What is that? 55%. All right, so just checking out my E2. And I'm just gonna check out my circuit right now. Uh, so it is in drip. Um, that's why the fans wasn't running uh, when I walked inside the cooler. Uh, right now the temperature is 43 degrees. And so far that's the only thing that's in the lawn. I'm running at 10 PSI, suction set point is nine. Um, run at 100% capacity. So all of our compressors are running. Um, we hit F2, we can see our condenser. Uh, condenser set point is 210, we're running at 234. Um, we got four condenser fans on rack four and all four fans are running. So now we're back in refrigeration. Um, that defrost just timed out, now we're on the pull down. So let's just log it overnight when nobody's here. Two o'clock in the morning, 12 degrees, 13, 14. So it's not really coming down. One o'clock at night, 35, that's when it went through defrost. Okay, six degrees right here. We was able to pull down out of alarm, but we never really reached set point. All right, so basically I just hooked up my gauge right here, my transducer. Got my blue hose hooked up right here on my circuit, circuit 53. Uh, that's for my walk-in freezer. Uh, just want to make sure my EPR valves are 100% open. Uh, this valve is 100% open. Basically, we should be reading the same pressure and the same saturation temperature. So, uh, let's just go ahead and check this out. So, so far we had 11 and 10 PSI. Uh, so, that is 100% open, uh, even though it's off like by a few points. We're refrigerating this R449A. We're gonna need to know that when we go down and check our super so, Where is my TXV? Right back there, look at that. Ice up, like it's kind of starving. Um, it's a weird little tight spot. I just got down here in the cooler. And uh, this is our dump line right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but right here, this is our dump line. Here's my termination sensor that terminates the defrost. Um, when that dump line gets up to 75 degrees, it terminates the defrost. But um, I need to hook up my gauges and um, check my superheat. I don't see no port right here. It's probably behind that insulation. Let me just tap up. All right, so this is a very, very tight spot. It was very hard for me to break this, um, this nut free. Look at that, all that copper. Look at my space. My phone can't even barely fit in between here. This is not serviceable to me. But um, I was able to get it out. I'm gonna show you a tool. It's a three quarter inch wrench. It's a cool tool to have. Let me get it out. All right, so here's the tool. It's three quarter. Has a socket on the other end. This is what I use to get the back of that cap off the TXV in this little tight location, man. So um, that's a pretty cool tool to have. Let me um. Switch the refrigerant on this. This is R449A. So we're gonna hit set. And um, we're gonna close the door. And um, we're gonna let this pour down. All right, so I got my jacket on. So got my hoodie on, face mask. I ain't got no gloves, but um, got long pants. Fans kicking on, refrigeration is on. 
We're gonna let this thing pull down, but I know we're gonna have high super heat. Go ahead and get this a minute to pour it out. Just see how it goes right now. We got 42 degrees superheat for R449A. Uh, we're just gonna let this thing pour down a little bit. Hopefully nobody comes in and out the freezer while I'm trying to set the superheat. All right, so I let this thing run maybe about 20 minutes. Back in the cooler, checking it out. Uh, we had 19 degrees superheat and drop it. Uh, that's pretty good. We're gonna let this pour down on some more. Probably want to see about four degrees, superheat three. What is it? For medium temp, you want like eight. Look at that. This is so tight. I could barely get the service wrench in. All right. Just give it some more. One, two. All right. As I just did that second one, you can hear that valve open up. Sound like it's allowing more refrigerant. Right now we're at 20.2. I just adjusted it and probably valved down so it went up a little bit, but now it seems to be opening back up. Let's see, 20.1. Let's just give it a few more minutes. All right, so I just walked back into the freezer and um, so far where we're at 10 degrees. Look like it's on a rise up. That's a lot lower than what we were before, so. All right, let me just try one other feature. We got a minimum and max and mean button right here. Let's just hit this and see. So the minimum superheat was 9.4. The max was 49.5. So I can adjust this maybe one more time. I don't really want to do two. I'll probably go one more. And basically all we're doing is just setting super heat. Nothing really special about this. Um, so basically like when you're looking at your pressure gauges, you know, pressure controls the temperature and temperature controls the pressure. So whatever your pressure converts to temperature wise, that's your coil temperature. Like the inside of this coil, that would be the temperature. And um, basically these units are designed with a 10 degree TD. So that's basically your coil temperature minus the return air temperature. And the return is the air that's entering the backside of the evaporator. So return air minus the coil temperature. Um, you should be, like I said, what, 10 degrees? So if this is, let me see, negative 10 degrees coil temperature, then we will reach zero degrees because that's what our set point is, zero. So we have to at least be negative 10 degrees and inside our evaporator right here in order for us to get down to zero. So there always has to be a, uh, what is a temperature differential of at least 10. Um, Self-contains and things like that. I think they're 15 degree TD. So like I said, temperature difference, TD means return air minus Return air minus coil temperature, not supply minus return. That's delta T. That's like air conditioning. But even air conditioning has a TD of 35, uh, 40 degree coil um, with a design temp of 75 degrees. So if you, where are we at? 6.9, we're dropping. 6.8 like I said we got about four six anything like that we should be able to pull down I gave this what two quarter turns um, I could definitely feel it let me check my thermometer let's see how cold it is in here where's my thermometer on the new veto bag all right so my thermometer just turned off turn it back on so right now it is six degrees in here. So our set point is zero. We're doing pretty good. Um, this shouldn't result in a callback. I'm not perfect, but I'm um, trying my best. Let's see, 6.8. So we're close. Um, 
probably give it a few more minutes. I really don't want to adjust it from here.